Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. After a long silence, it's finally time for a status update on the Blue64 project, which, for those who don't know, is a plug-and-play Bluetooth adapter for the Commodore 64. Please don't mind this weird ribbon cable, we'll come back to that at the end of the video, but for now, this is what we're interested in. We'll take a look at the new features and then show a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to assemble the DIY kit that is currently for sale on RetroUpdates.com, which you can find in the video description. If you have a C64C model, please be sure to watch the full video as that model requires some special assembly steps. The first big improvement is this large LC filter which was added to eliminate some electrical interference that was present in the previous prototype. The star of the show, however, is the newly added support for Bluetooth keyboards. At the moment, only Bluetooth Low Energy keyboards are supported, which is becoming the standard for most modern devices, even really cheap ones like the one I'm using right now, which I got new for about 8 euros. Once the keyboard is connected, we can type any character available on the original keyboard, as well as all special key combinations like color and case changes, shift lock, pets key characters, and so on. Keys are currently mapped to a standard US layout. However, I'm also planning to support the same positional mapping you would find in the Vice emulator, so that with the help of some custom keycap stickers, we can get closer to the original experience. And as usual, up to two Bluetooth controllers can be connected, which together with the keyboard allow complete wireless control of the C64. Now let's take a look at the DIY kit and how to assemble it. The kit consists of the mainboard, an ESP32 dev kit, the necessary pin headers and the power supply filter components. The first step is to clean up the mainboard by breaking off the excess PCB along the V-cuts all around the edges. Once that's done, we can solder the ESP32 dev kit. The board is soldered on the top side with the antenna towards the SPL logo. The pin headers are already trimmed to the right length, so there's no need to clip the pins afterwards. Now it's time to solder the keyboard header. The so-called key pin must be removed in order to connect the original keyboard. It can be clipped or simply pulled out with pliers. Once again, the header is installed on the top side of the board on the pin row that is closer to the dev kit. The best way to solder the header to the right height is to connect the original keyboard first and then solder the two outer pins while holding the connector against the board. Now we can solder the motherboard header on the bottom of the board. Once again, start by soldering a single pin to verify that the header is 90 degrees with the board, and then proceed with soldering the rest. Finally, we can install the power supply filter. Be aware that the electrolytic capacitor has a polarity, so the negative terminal, which is marked in white, needs to be connected according to the markings on the board. Both capacitor and inductor should lay flat on the board, so you can simply bend the feet 90 degrees, solder the parts, and clip any excess from the bottom. To finish off the assembly, we can close this jumper on the bottom, which will enable the restore key. The purpose of the jumper is to be able to disconnect the restore key while debugging the firmware, as the same pin is used for the debug output of the ESP32 when enabled. The fully assembled board can now be plugged directly onto the motherboard connector. Be aware that the Blue64 does not have a key pin, so it won't prevent you from connecting it wrong. Be 
be sure the computer is powered off while doing this and make sure the connectors are well aligned or you might damage your devices. The final step is to plug the keyboard into the pin header on the top and we're good to go. The assembly and installation process is a little different for the C64C with motherboard version 250469, also known as the short board. In this board, the keyboard connector is in a different position compared to all other versions, and several large components in the proximity of the connector leave no clearance for the Blue64. Not only that, but the keyboard assembly sits really close to the motherboard, which means we also have a vertical clearance issue. The solution was to design a special adapter so that the Blue64 can be placed outside of the motherboard perimeter. This also requires soldering the motherboard header on the top side of the Blue64 instead of on the bottom as usual. The adapters I designed have not been delivered yet, so I put together a breadboard to demonstrate the concept. First connect the Blue64 to the adapter and then plug the adapter onto the motherboard header. The available space is not much, so it can become a little trickier to reinstall the keyboard assembly, but once in place, there are no clearance issues. As I mentioned at the start of the video, the Blue64 as well as my other project, the DC64, are for sale on RetroUpdates.com, which features lots of excellent products for various platforms and is definitely worth a visit through the link in the video description. And while I'm here, I would like to thank all the beta testers on Discord that took the risk and put in the effort to help improve these products. And if you were still wondering about the large ribbon cable hanging from my motherboard, that's part of my next project, the HD64, which uses an FPGA to generate an HDMI video and audio output for the Commodore 64. As a teaser, here's some gameplay I captured directly from my prototype, but that's a topic for another video. Anyway, thanks again for watching and see you all next time.